I'm going to do a quick recording about the situation um, regarding Kiki Palmer and her ex-boyfriend whatever his name is um, honestly I know I should know his name but I mean in the spirit of I don't know what in the spirit of what I'm just going to refer to him as that man so her situation is very very sad in case you haven't heard about the news please check out like just do a quick search on the internet on youtube channels or on google search um if you want to be clued in on the situation obviously she's going through um a separation of sorts and um they're reporting that she has filed for a restraining order against that man who happens to be the father of her eight month son and it's really sad because like the things the information that is coming out is that he has been what's the word that i'm looking for he has been quite violent with her and that is why she has requested a restraining order so right what i want to make clear is that i'm not making this recording just you know for entertainment purposes but also for not for entertainment purposes but for education purposes all too often i think as women we don't get to hear at least for me what i will say is that when you when you finally become an adult woman is when you start learning the lessons about these intense situations with men these volatile situations with men and i think from the age that a girl becomes mature she should be taught about dating and what should be acceptable and what isn't acceptable treatment from a man so here she is a mom not even a year has passed and of course like when the whole situation for me when the situation came out about um the usher concert and how he like publicly chastised her i mean for me i was just like it's a wrap for me because i wouldn't want someone trying to expose me like that to the world i feel like if someone has a problem with me like deal with it privately one-on-one -on -one, instead of trying to publicly shame you and then trying to garner support from other groups of people so that the wrong action aka public shaming cannot seem so bad because other people agree with him it's a no so for me i would be out of that relationship as soon as that thing happened now i'm to, i'm speaking for myself i don't know the inner workings of that relationship so i can't say that oh she still stayed with him or she didn't stay with him no one has come out with that information so speculation isn't really doing us any justice here what i'm going to talk about is like the situation of him being aggressive uber aggressive with her and harming her and yeah let me just put it that way the thing is that she like i said she just has an eight month old child she's in a very vulnerable space right now and she shouldn't be in a situation where she has to be dealing with this toxic individual who comes into her personal space whether they shared that home or they didn't a home is a place where you should be peaceful you should be at peace you should feel safe and you should be able to relax there so this man comes and while he's living with her whether he's living with her or not according to the reports he trespassed so the assumption is that they are no longer living together and 
he trespassed into her home in the name of wanting to see his son and taking him out for an event of his choosing first of all like you don't trespass whether someone has something of yours or not if it is not your space and it's theirs you should get consent from them to be able to access your home and then he proceeds to hurt her while he's inside her home and that is so damaging on so many levels no matter where you are inside outside of course that behavior is not acceptable and then the thing is that the child was in that home and the, here's the thing about children children can feel energy like they're like sponges energy sponges man so the fact that he exposed his child to that violent energy is just so wrong he not only has violated kiki he's also violated his son he's traumatized his child by by letting his infant son hear whatever scuffle or whatever in whatever was going on between the two of them now if the son has witnessed this behavior or not the fact that this man did that to someone else's child just i mean it's just mind-boggling because sometimes as when we are intimate partners we feel like we have acts we have um ownership of this person and we don't believe that that person belongs to other people kiki has parents she has friends she has siblings and she belongs to she serves different communities different circles she's important to so many different people not just to you and not just to her your son your shared son so i don't understand why you feel like you're entitled to treat her so poorly because you have an intimate relationship with her that is just not acceptable and for the ladies out there you shouldn't let a man ever think that he is the only thing that is important to you because the reality of life is that we have been born from a community we have created community communities for ourselves in terms of like the friendships that we have in terms of the people that we work with in terms of the people that work for us so you just don't one person has no 100 percent entitlement to you that is my takeaway from that is one thing that i would like the listeners to that are hearing this to understand another thing is that he is internal like he to his son whether he knows it or not he is traumatizing that child and number two he has planted a seed of violence and this child will struggle if it is not repaired if the situation is not repaired aka if the relationship isn't completely severed if this man continues to be a menace and harass the mother of his child if he continues to be a menace in using his son holding him ransom and subsequently holding his mother ransom because they have a shared child that is another thing that is going to mess with this kid's head and this child will need therapy and i pray that it won't be lifelong therapy i pray that two situations happen either this man does a complete turnaround and change in his life and repents he seeks forgiveness from kiki seeks forgiveness from his son seeks forgiveness from kiki's family and gets the ther much needed therapy you know either that situation or like there is like she wins full custody 
full primary custody without any type of visitation or whatever until he has proved that he has gotten the psychological psychiatric healing that he he needs so that he can treat this woman with respect and that he can also treat this child with respect because the thing is like if he's able to do that to a fully grown adult woman a human a fully grown adult human being what do you, what do you think he will do to a vulnerable infant someone who can't stand up for themselves someone who can't even speak up and have the language to express what is going on in his head in his heart and what is going on in his physical environment whether it is because he hasn't yet developed the language or whether he understands the 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 happenings in his environment and found a way to articulate what is happening and also he hasn't developed the emotional tool set to be able to understand what is going on and to even decipher right from wrong and also um i'm looking for the right word but to also um be able to stand up for himself he doesn't have that emotional tool set because his mother is dealing with a dangerous person and i'll i'll say i'll say this what i will say is that i can every mother's instinct is to fight for her child to protect her child not only to nurture the child so i believe that is exactly what kiki is doing but then you can see in this in this situation in this role this man is not being the protector of his quote unquote family that he claims to be he is ex he is not protecting the mother of his child he is not protecting his child matter of fact he is abusing his mother the mother of his child and he is abusing the child by putting them in such a toxic harmful dangerous situation he is being the perpetrator of family violence so one thing that i will say is that we can't go blaming the woman for oh but why did she choose this person why did sometimes you don't know who you're dealing with and sometimes with people like even though you have different types of conversations with them and you try to vet them out you will never see it happens you don't know until you know so while we're in this situation there is no point of coulda woulda shoulda the point of this situation is how do you act now everybody who is within her circle i feel needs to give her the support that she requires emotional support and even physical support physical support is like for example just being there present if you have family or friends like having your family and your friends coming over staying with you or possibly be even you going and stay over with your friends or your family that is the type of physical presence that she needs from her community so that they can protect her and her son from this person of course emotional support can be um listening to the things that she has gone through I'm recommending her to see a therapist so that she doesn't carry this trauma this physical and emotional trauma that she has endured you know and taking her case very very seriously because this whole thing of perpetrating family violence towards a woman is just very wrong it's devastating and it's very damaging and detrimental to a person's physical health now i will not stand here and ever protect a person who is the perpetrator of the thing whatever his issues are his family can help him get the help that he needs that is not who i am here for this is not who i am here to support another thing that i want to say is that 
when somebody shows you the signs of this type of physical aggression please understand that there is no such thing as oh he will get better he won't get better if someone cannot see you as a human being who is who is deserving of good treatment who is deserving of the same treatment that you would want for yourself um they clearly have no understanding of that they clearly they, they are just not in the same realm they don't have the emotional maturity so they are not to be taken seriously sorry i lost my train of thought there i was just um interrupted during the recording but um i'll just move on to the next point another thing that i want to say is that a lot of times and especially for me myself what i will say is that sometimes um <clears throat> as women you are we have been trained to think that and especially a good woman let me speak that way a good woman or a godly woman you will be taught that you know you should help a man with his problems with his emotional problems with his mental problems and that has landed me in i mean a situation where i exposed myself and i was vulnerable to being um the target of someone who wasn't mentally or should i say emotionally mature or emotionally protective i ended up being exposed to someone who was verbally abusive to me and emotionally abusive and it took a toll on my mental health so this whole thing of like you have to play therapist to someone is uh, something that i no longer subscribe to it is something that i warn women against especially because that's something that i was socialized to do mm, this whole savior complex of like you know maybe if i step in and show him what a good woman is and help him take you know um know how to control his temper control his anger or i give myself whatever excuses for his past um to justify not to justify but in my mind it was like to be understanding of his unacceptable behavior and my experience was that he never got better and I'm the person who became the new target of his emotional or his anger his uh, explosive anger outbursts his uh, emotional dysregulation so I thought I was doing something good but what ended up happening is that I was not I wouldn't say enabling that behavior but I will say enabling that behavior if you get it you get it if you don't um I hope that one day you will get it and that didn't serve me and it I stayed in that situation for a long time and it ended up I ended up realizing like the only person that can save this person is Jesus and I am Jesus. I'm not trying to take the role of Jesus cuz I can't do Jesus's role as well as Jesus can do, okay? I was I realized that I was going to be in a potentially dangerous situation and I did not want to be a part of that anymore because I had watched 2020, I had watched true crime. I know how that story ends. So I got myself out of that situation a couple of times but that's a story time for another time because it was back and forth let's get back together let's no let's break up let's get back together let's break up that type of situation but I did learn very many valuable lessons it it showed me stuff about myself it showed me stuff that society had taught me so I did a lot of learning and I'm learning in that process and I thank God every day that I came out of that situation alive i was very wounded i was very hurt i was easily triggered but guess what i sought the therapy that i needed and it stopped me from being triggered 
um, like I said, you shouldn't run away from your triggers. You should face your triggers so that you can heal and so that you can grow and so that you can become stronger and so that you can be there and help people who are in similar situations and you can help them. You can be a pillar of support to them and help them also get out of that situation um, by dropping gems. I'm not saying sometimes you should be involved directly in those situations. No, but then you strategically help someone realize um, the situation they are in by opening their eyes and being there just to support them in any way that you can so that they can get out of that situation. And I'm not telling you that you should put yourself in harm's way. Definitely do not do that because like I said, you belong to a bigger community and um, you should protect the people who are in your care. Um, yeah, so regarding that situation, that's just how I feel the lessons for girls. Do not be Jesus. It is not your job to be Jesus. Jesus does a better job of being Jesus than you ever will. Number two, get out of that situation. Immediately you see a red flag. Trust me, baby, you you are not it's not going to get any better it's going to escalate into something that one you never see coming that is potentially dangerous detrimental to your mental health if not your physical health um number three is that always think about this is how i i, I, I see myself right if I had a daughter, if I had a sister, would I want her to be in this type of situation? So if the answer is no, you should also not be in that situation because guess what? You're someone's friend, you're someone's sister, you're someone's future uh, partner, you're someone's future mother, you're someone's future mentor. If um, marriage and children are not for you, you are a community leader in the future. So um, people out there need you this person is not the only person that needs you um, number four take care of yourself the best person to take care of you is yourself because sometimes people won't feel the same pain that you feel they will sympathize with your situation they will empathize with your situation but remember that you're the only person who is going to have to do that hard work of healing that hard work of um getting over the trauma that you have encountered and endured in this situation another thing is that um <clears throat> that i will say is go for people who are aligned with you the minute you sense that this person doesn't have the same goals the same outlook on life as you jump out of that boat even though they're cute, even though they make money, even though they're well educated, or insert whatever requirements that you have on your list of requirements for the type of gay that is for you. Trust me, principles are the key thing to go for. All these other superficial things or all these awards, accolades, or societal um, praises are not worth it go for character character will always trump all these outward things because at the end of the day when someone is being rude disrespectful to you violent towards you trust me you won't be thinking about how cute he is you won't be thinking about how rich he is you'll just be thinking about what i mean hateful person this one is and how i wish i never met you and how i wish you know um let me not say what I want to say because that's 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 really rude. But you know, um, moving on. Number six, always go with your intuition. You don't have to rationalize this behavior. You don't have to make excuses for this behavior. Get out of your head and get in touch with your gut. The minute someone something says, mm -mm, I need to get out of this situation. Trust me get out of this situation you don't need to explain anything but if you feel like oh I, I i want to be a nice person or you feel totally unhinged for me what i would say is that you know i'm just going through a lot of things right now and i think like i need to actually just take a mental break and seek some professional help from 
you know, therapist, I'm just going so I'm I'm just going through some things in my life. If you're that person who feels like you have to uh, over explain and you haven't gotten the courage to just say no or use no as a sentence, that is what I would say. Just say there's a lot going on in my life right now and I just can't be present in this relationship as much as I would want to be in this relationship. I have to just take a break and um, sit alone quietly and gather myself because li life is just lifing right now and it's difficult for me right now. I just can't be present in this relationship, so I'm sorry I have to bow out. Personally, right now where I am in my life, I wouldn't, I would just, I wouldn't, give that much of a reason i would block i would unfollow i would lose the number i would forget everything um that's what i would do if i'm dealing with someone who i know the situation is dangerous with and go no contact trust me there is no closure there is no awakening there is no enlightenment that you're going to get from this person and that thing of like needing closure is actually a trap when you're dealing with someone who is emotionally unhinged so don't go for it sis trust me there are some things you will never know you will never understand so just begin to accept that and begin to be okay with that if you're curious about why the person that you're dealing with is the way they're dealing with, imagine you're not going to get the answers from them. Try, how about try going for a walk, a run, going to the yoga studio, or better yet, listening to therapists, going and reading self help books, and never reach out to this person. Okay, like I said, let God do what God needs to do. If if there's ever going to be time for closure or reaching out how about this i pose the challenge that you let that person uh, many years down the line like i post i i personally and i'm saying this completely sarcastically like 10 years down the line let that person reach out to you and apologize you to you for the things that they did to you because trust me here's what i think i think they're never going to turn around it's just like one out of ten thousand that are ever going to turn around or do the thing that you fantasize them doing and that's just cold hard facts that i am dishing out here so having said that i think i'm just going to end on this note and i wish i'm sending prayers out kiki's way i am sending prayers out for her family i hope her family is going to be okay her son is going to be okay and her born family is going to be okay as well i i pray that her friends reach out to her and give her the type of protection and support that she requires from them so that she can you know heal and so that she can be protected. And also, Kiki says, if you're hearing all this, imagine, move, girl, move. Sell the house or do whatever you got to do. Move so that this guy never knows where you live. And so that he can't trespass into your, into your home. And also so that you can, like, you know, get a new place where there isn't that bad energy, bad vibe in the house. And... So that you can be in a place where, like, you know, you're at peace and you're not getting triggered thinking about, oh, this is the spot where this and that happened. Um, please know that, I mean, this is just a bad spot in your life right now. It's not a forever thing and that good things are coming your way. Take a break. Go heal, honey. You are unproblematic. We are out here supporting you. We've never met but we are out here rooting for you. We're out here praying for you. And we know that the situation is just going to be awesome. Do what you got to do. Protect yourself. Protect your son. Be unapologetic. And imagine be the lovely woman that you are created to be. Be the fierce mama. We're out here praying for you. Okay. Bye, y'all, and have a great day, whatever time it is. Have a great day, have a great night, have a great afternoon, and that's it for me. Bye.